Sir Mixalot would have a whole new song to write now, wouldn't he? I don't know if Titano Boa flows as well as Anaconda, but it would be even more fearsome than ever before. It's hard to imagine a world where all sorts of giant creatures exist, as it already seems like we've got enough to deal with. But hey, everything is changing across the board anyway, so why not consider what life might be like if we toss an insane animal into the mix? Hello fellow friends and philosophers, and welcome back to the most mind-bending channel on YouTube, Life's Biggest Questions. I'm your voice in the void, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to take a look at a question concerning a crazy snake. What if the Titanoboa existed today? Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more prehistoric panic. Perfect, let's get started. Let's first take a look at what kind of monster we're dealing with today before jumping into our question. The Titanoboa, or Titanoboa serogenesis, is the largest snake on record. No other slithery creature comes close. At around 40 feet long and weighing over a ton, it was an absolute unit. Based on models that many scientists and researchers have painstakingly put together, which is apparently very difficult to do with ancient snakes, this lengthy lad looked like a boa and acted like an anaconda. It was the apex predator of its era, eating anything and everything it wanted to because who was going to stop a snake that size? Its brown skin provided camouflage as it stalked the swampy jungles of Sarah Joan 58 to 60 million years ago. The Titanoboa is thought to have hunted like the modern anaconda, wading in shallow rivers and swamps. It could wait for very long periods of time underwater, either holding its breath or with its nose just a little bit above the surface. As soon as an unlucky animal came by that looked good to eat, it would strike quickly and constrict unmercifully. Whatever managed to get ensnared within this giant snake's grip would be food in no time. Anacondas are known for squeezing their prey so tightly that their blood can't even circulate. So now scale that up to 40 feet and weighing a ton. Can't feel good on the old body. After constricting prey, it would then swallow it whole. Constrictors tend to have rows of thin and pointed teeth too. They use these to puncture flesh and keep prey locked in. These chompers are recurved too, meaning that if you try to pull away, you'll likely just sink them deeper into your flesh. Evidence points to Titanoboa having dental charts similar to modern constrictors, meaning that in addition to being 40 feet and terrifying, they also have teeth that will not let you leave. Yeah, people would be absolutely demolished if they came face to face with one of these. Snakes tend to be generalist eaters, meaning that they often eat whatever they can get. So looking back at the potential menu in the ancient jungles, it's possible that they ate crocodiles, gigantic turtles, immense lungfish, and even other snakes. Yep, Titanoboa may have eaten their brothers in arms in certain situations. Imagine watching two of them fight. So how did these titanic snakes end up so big? Well, the first evidence of these snakes existing was found in and around a huge Colombian coal mine. On top of burying millions of tons of coal, Sarah Joan is one of the world's richest fossil deposits. These days, it's largely a desolate wasteland, but the coal points to the region being lush and tropical millions of years ago. When the dinosaurs disappeared, the Titanoboa had no problem stepping in. There was a time where Sarah Joan was a swampy jungle. Everything was hotter, wetter, and larger than it is today. With temperatures pushing an average of above 80 degrees Fahrenheit daily and over 150 inches of rain per year, there was a lot of dense, diverse wildlife. And when things are warmer, cold-blooded creatures can get bigger. That's where gigantic turtles, crocodiles, and lungfish came from. And these huge creatures fed the Titanoboa. See, when a reptile can absorb energy from the sun to maintain their metabolic rate instead of using up resources to do it themselves, they can grow much, much larger. This is why insects, reptiles, and amphibians tend to be bigger in the tropics compared to more temperate zones. No living snake comes close to the Titanoboa, with the silver medalist clocking in at just over 30 feet. Way to go, big guy. Of course, before we can think about it being alive today, we need to consider why it died out in the first place. There are two theories on this matter, but no consensus. Number one is that the Titanoboa went extinct due to global temperature change. If the warm temperatures maintained their metabolism and allowed them to grow to immense sizes, then temperatures dropping would cease their sustainability. The second theory is that their habitats changed over time. There's definitely a large disparity between today's Sarah Joan and the Sarah Joan 60 million years ago. What was once a lush, steamy, swampy jungle is now essentially a wasteland. The large snakes likely found it hard to hack it. Such is life. Which theory do you side with? Temperature drop? Habitat change? Maybe a mix of both? Let me know in the comments. We'll make one more detour before arriving at our destination, or questionation if you would. Let's take a look at how this immense snake was discovered. It was a lot more recent than one might think. 
See, the first inkling of a Titanoboa came about in the early 2000s. The whole story is documented quite well by the Smithsonian and is available online, so I recommend you check that out if it interests you. Years before, a geologist had discovered an unknown fossil and tossed it in a coal company display case. At the time, the fossil was labeled a petrified branch. Flash forward a few years to a student touring the mines. They kept finding fossilized leaves, which led to the discovery of more fossilized fun. Eventually, somebody noticed the so-called branch in the display case and had it removed for analysis. What they found was a partial jawbone from a now extinct crocodile-like creature. This got people excited as it signaled more discoveries to be made. As folks flocked to the mines, a whole lot of bones and remnants were found in mudstone. After a shipment of fossils labeled crocodile was received, a snake-minded researcher realized that some of the bits and pieces resembled snake parts. From here, more and more fossils previously classified as anything but snakes were found to actually come from titanoboas. At the time, it seemed almost impossible that a snake could be so big, so these parts were often overlooked. Apparently, even with these parts, it's very hard to rebuild an ancient snake. It's very rare to get the whole spine in a neatly articulated row, and snake skulls are also notoriously hard to come across. They're made up of delicate bones that are not very well fused together, and it's also likely that a great many titanoboas died at the bottom of rivers, as this is where they spent a lot of time. Thankfully, some skull remnants have been found and largely complete models have been put together. And now we've made it to the point where we can pontificate on the possibility of this pernicious predator passing us by today. What if the Titanoboa was alive today? Well, for it to even have a chance at existing, it would have to be way hotter than it is these days. Even in the Amazon, where a good deal of other large snakes reside, the temperatures would not be adequate to keep the Titanoboa going. However, as global temperatures rise and people keep burning coal, we may still get to Titanoboa temperatures. Wouldn't that be ironic if the material that led to the discovery of the snake itself created temperatures where it could live again? Classic. If that were the case, everything would be a lot more lush and a lot more sweaty, in certain regions anyways. Other places would just dry up and become largely uninhabitable. So if the Titanoboa were alive today, a whole lot would change in the world. It would likely mean that a lot of other huge creatures would make repeat appearances too. How else would the huge snakes eat? So we'd have giant snakes, crocodiles, turtles, bugs, and even fish. It would be a freaky time to be alive for sure. You can bet that if a titanoboa sets its sights on you, you'd be crushed and swallowed in a heartbeat. At its thickest, the titanoboa could measure up to a grown person's waist. So if it really wanted to chow down on some humans, there wouldn't be much we could do to stop it. It ate giant crocodiles for goodness sake. We definitely see a resurgence in movies along the lines of Anaconda, with the ferocious snakes hunting down all sorts of jungle visitors. Hell, we might even see some documentaries with similar plot lines. Humans are quite adaptable, but it would be interesting to see how we all react when temperatures skyrocket and killer snakes roam the jungles once more. Of course, a lot of folks wouldn't live near jungles, but as desert wastelands cropped up around the world, more people might be forced to make the move. Then it's time to sit around the campfire and figure out how to deal with these 40-foot monstrosities. You better bring more than buns, hon. Burgers might do. And that's essentially what might happen if the Titanoboa existed today. We'd live on a hotter, sweatier planet with more rain and more giant creatures. And the Titanoboa would definitely get a bum rap for eating humans whole. Maybe some lunatics would decide that it was time to go and eliminate the entire species. Who knows? Maybe something even deadlier would take the crown without the Titanoboa roaming around. What do you think? Would you ever want to come face to face with one? Would you risk the jungle expedition? What gigantic creature would you want to come back? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more caffeinated ones from What If The Migo Were Real. Fox Jake asks, What if It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia was real? It is, you can't convince me otherwise. McRiggles asks, What if when we exhaled, bubbles came out? I bet our voices would be really funny. Either that or we'd be tasting soap all the time. Adolfo Cardoza asks, What is the perfect age to go to college? Uh, probably like 50, right after you send your kids off to college. That way you can learn all the things that you wish you'd known throughout your life up until that point. Supernova61310 says, What if Canada was real? Then I might actually exist instead of just being a voice in the void. And Jolly Space Pirate says, Sometimes I ask that question about myself, lol. Thank you, hope you're having a jolly good fun. Jolly Space Pirate! I've always wanted to meet one of you guys. Now my wishes come true. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum and all that. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I become a small bottle of olive oil, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more cold-blooded craziness. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.